Good evening, I'm Prasad and you're watching Kini Flash. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak told a crowd at the Hard Truth Cassius King Forum at the Amno headquarters in Kuala Lumpur on Wednesday that a sniper fired a shot at his office in his constituency of Pekan in early 2017. He said it seemed like a warning shot, however he was not there when the purported shooting took place. Some people reacted rather skeptically to Najib's claim. They weren't buying his story. So today on Twitter, after several people accused him of lying about the security threat, he felt compelled to disclose a photograph. He also revealed that his UTK or Police Special Operations Force security detail was heightened from 2017 to 2018 after the purported incident. According to Najib, a police report was lodged at the time regarding the incident, but the authorities were unable to trace those responsible. The case was then classified as NFA for no further action. Based on the information on the police report Najib was referring to, which he himself shared on Twitter, the purported bullet hole was as big as a 5 cent coin. Prayerless Mufti Muhammad Asri Zainal Abidin said learning heart or Jawi calligraphy is not an attempt at Islamization because Jawi is related to Basa Malaysia and not their religion. He said if the logic of those who argued against heart on the basis of Islamization is applied, Romanized writing would make everyone Christian instead. Azri was responding to a question raised during a lecture in Kanga last night. The Mufti believes that the polemic surrounding the introduction of heart in the Bahasa Malaysia syllabus for standard four pupils is related to non-Muslims' phobia towards Islam. Following backlash to the proposal to make the learning of heart compulsory, Education Minister Mazli Malik yesterday said teachers would be given the power to decide on how to teach it. Although the ministry did not clarify the term optional, when quizzed later, Malaysia understands that teachers would be allowed to decide whether or not to teach heart. Mazli also said that heart lessons would be cut down to three pages instead of the initial six. Selangor Menteri Besar Amruddin Shari has indicated that the controversial amendments to allow unilateral conversions may still be tabled in the State Assembly if there is a need to do so. Speaking to reporters last night, Amruddin said that at the present, only Selangor Penang and Sabah still defer on the interpretation of laws on the conversion of minors. That's why, but unfortunately, we try to bring it to the end of the sitting, <coughs> but unfortunately, Something happened during the sitting, <coughs> which is ada a few usul tidak dapat dibentangkan, and because of that is uh, overtaken by event. Uh, but uh, I think uh, we are still in the discussion, and it involves actually a bigger matter because it also involves the federal constitution. That's why <coughs> the I think we still not have any conclusion about the about the about the about the papers. And we need certain understanding, uh, include uh, 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 among, among the state assembly. Selango DAP chairperson Gobind Singh Dio has reiterated that any attempt to introduce laws which permit unilateral religious conversions in Selango would be unconstitutional. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, the question of it being retabled again was never discussed at the Pakatan Harapan uh, meeting yesterday. So, of course, I think uh, the question of it being tabled again as it is doesn't arise. Uh, but insofar as we are concerned, my stand remains. And we are firm in our position that any bill which is unconstitutional uh, ought not to be tabled in the State Legislative Assembly. Indonesian President Joko Widodo, who is popularly known as Jokowi, flew in yesterday for a two-day visit to Malaysia. He arrived at the Perdana Putra building in Putrajaya today for a meeting with Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. They were expected to discuss matters concerning bilateral, regional and international interests. Following their meeting, they left in a proton persona driven by Mahathir to head to a luncheon hosted by the Prime Minister at Sri Perdana. This would mark the second time Jokowi was in a proton driven by Mahathir. And that is all for me today. For more stories, go to kinitv.com. Please leave a comment, hit like and subscribe. I'm Prasad. Thanks for watching. Good night.